Good morning, Grace Christian Center. Good morning. Good morning. The title of the sermon this morning is When All Seems Lost. When All Seems Lost. In Job chapter 1, verse 1, we find a man who the Bible records is a very godly man, a man of godly principle, of morals, of godly character. Uh, he was a fine example of a representation of God on the earth. Job was very wealthy. He was a very successful man. Um, he had a he had a many children, ten children, and um, he was up there in age probably. But God had certainly blessed him. And it goes on to say here that not only did Job, the life of Job, catch the eye of God, but it also caught the eye of Satan. And today in our life, whether you believe in Jesus or not. Satan will come to kill, steal, and destroy everything God has really given to you. But it's God's will that you come to know Jesus and that you have life abundantly. Now I speak by way of video to you as well, listening. And I'm greatly encouraged because there's many people that are listening overseas now. Um, and it's, it brings me a joy to be able to know that what God is doing here, that it has been able to touch lives on the other side of the world. And that just really amazes me and boggles me. So again, I welcome you this morning as well. Amen. In Job chapter 1, it says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless, upright, fearing God, and turning away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. His possessions were also 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. And that man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Now, this is a description that Job was blessed beyond measure. That he had pretty much everything a lot of people in this world would probably seek after. But the thing that we have to see about Job is that he feared God. And not out of fear of, I better do right or God's going to punish me. Meaning he had a respect for God. That fear, he had a, that fear was really translated as an awe. Being in awe of God. Being in respect of the Lord. Not doing something wrong in the eyes of God because he loved God. And because God loved him. And he had a really understanding of the purpose of God in his life. And I know that he honored God in everything that he did. It goes on to say in verse 4, it says, His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one of his of, on their day. And they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of feasting had completed their cycle, Job would send and consecrate them, rising up early in the morning and offering burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, Perhaps my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And thus Job did this continually. That's translated into today. I know a lot of people who serve the Lord, they love Jesus, but they really have no more control over their kids. Now granted, these children of Job were adults. They were adults. They were responsible for their own actions. But it still shows the love of the father, their father Job, how he interceded in prayer for them. At that time, they would sacrifice a, a, a spotless animal that, that was near perfection, and that they would give that up as an offering for God. And that's translated into today how many godly people around the world, they have kids who have gone astray. They have kids who are knee deep in sin. And you're, you know, you're, you know, some of you were those type of children. And you had a mother or a father or a grandmother or a grandfather that prayed for you and prayed for you and prayed for you that you would come back to your senses like the prodigal son and that you would make things right with God and with the rest of the world. Job did this. And Job loved his children so much, but he knew that their hearts were wicked. He knew that their hearts were, were bent on self-gratification. And there may be some of us, and you listening by video, that have children that are of an adult age, but are living in self-gratification. They know what's right, but they choose to do wrong. And I know, parents, you're intervening for them. But there's got to come a point in time where they must stand up for righteousness and holiness in their own life. 
The message this morning is, when all seems lost. When you do what you're called to do, when you pray, when you do the things that God has put in your heart to do, and sometimes you just always are experiencing trials and tribulations one after the other, and you feel like you hit a brick wall, and you feel like you just don't have no more fire in you of God, you feel like you're just ready to just give up, you know, you may feel like that. Well, I want to talk about why the believer may feel that way. Why? Why do we feel that way? Why do we get like that? And how do we prevent that from happening? In order to understand that, we got to give a... We got, and please hear me. We have to get a heavenly perspective of what's happening in the very world that we live in, in, the very, in our very surroundings. The Bible says, keep your mind on things above, not on things below. By doing that, we need to be aware of the supernatural activity that is happening in our life around us. Angels and demons constantly in battle over our very souls. And the Bible teaches that, yes, angels are ministering spirits. And that demons, the fallen angels, that they have been commanded by Satan to go out and to kill, steal, and destroy. And the Bible warns us that they would do that. But there is something, and the mystery of God Almighty is Jesus Christ. And Jesus came to set the captive free. And I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you're about to go through. No weapon formed against you shall ever, ever prosper. No weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. That is the Word of God. And God has given you a, a promise and a blessing that you can stand on and believe with all your heart. God will not fail you. It says in verse 6, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God, meaning the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around it. The angels were coming into the throne room of God and Satan slipped right in among them. Either they knew or they didn't know. I believe they may not have known. I believe only the supernatural eye of God can see through all things. See, because even angels can be deceived. That's what Satan did. And many angels, the third of the angels fell from heaven because they were deceived because they believed in something that was a lie. And God is going on to say here that only God, especially if you're going to have the, the boldness to enter into the throne of God, do you really think God will not see the enemy coming into His very throne room? Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 it says and the great dragon meaning Satan was thrown down the serpent of old who was called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world he was thrown down to the earth and his angels his fallen angels were thrown down to the earth with him and in Revelation 12 12 it says this for this reason rejoice O heavens why because Satan has been rid of heaven I mean heaven has been rid of Satan it says rejoice O heavens and you who dwell in them in the heavens but woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has come down to you having great wrath knowing that he has a short time. At this time in history in the book of Job my opinion Satan had access to the throne of God. And I believe in my opinion in Revelation I believe that when Jesus died and rose from the dead and ascended back to the Father I believe Satan was kicked out. Now that's just my timetable my opinion my theory. But we have to understand that Satan will always stand before God and accuse us of doing wrong making lies up of the believer. It goes on to say in Revelation verse 12, it says that Satan has declared war on those who hold to the commandments of Jesus Christ. Satan has declared war on only, only one type of person. And you read towards the end of Revelation chapter 12, it's those who hold to the testimony of Jesus. I know Jesus did not come in the book of the Old Testament, in the book of Job, in the days of Job, there was no cross, there was no uh, testimony of Jesus on the earth, but Job in his faith and his love for God, he could see the cross. Just like right now today, you as a believer in Jesus Christ, you can see the return of Jesus Christ. Amen? You can just feel it. You can just sense it. You can just know that it is something that is going to happen. Job was the same way. He knew there was a Messiah that was going to come to the earth and that was going to redeem all of mankind who which wanted to be redeemed. And Job had that hope in him just like we have that hope in us for the return of Christ again. 
It goes on to say here that these angels, they came in before God, and it goes on to say that Satan snuck in there with them, and God saw them, and God and in, God didn't instigate it, but God initiated conversation. God asked him, because you cannot go before a king and speak unless he speaks to you. And He is the Almighty. He is the Alpha and Omega. Nothing can go against the Word of God. He, he was able to enter because God allowed Him to. But God is the one who spoke first. You ever been like that with your children? Where you said, be quiet and you just listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. At one point, God loved Lucifer. But because iniquity was found in his heart, he became demonic and he fell forever for eternity from grace. But God spoke to him. And God gave him the time of the day. He goes to say in verse 8, it says, The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. And then Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge about him and his house and all that he has? On every side? Have you blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the hand and land? But put forth your hand now and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not put forth your hand on him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. This is something to be reckoned with here. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says this. It says, No temptation has overtaken you, but such is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. God will never, ever put you in a situation where you will be overcome. God will test you, but the devil will always come to tempt you. But the Word says here in 1 Corinthians 10.13, that God will never put you in a trial where you just have absolutely no way out. Do you hear me this morning, church? Church, do you hear me this morning? Whatever you're going through, whatever you're suffering, God is saying through His Word, you have a way to escape. And it's through a relationship with my Son, Jesus Christ. That's why God was able to stare at Satan and, 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 it, and God boasted in Job. And that's what God wants to do in the church today. He wants to be able to say, look at my servants. Look at how they glorify me. Look at how they love me. Don't you like to boast in your children? Man. Of course you do. When people start talking about, oh, little Johnny, he just he knows how to, to play the guitar and he knows how to run fast and, and the other parents will start getting competitive. Well, yeah, my son, he knows how to do this. It's natural. We just want to boast in our children. And God is doing this because He knows what He has put in you. And He knows what He wants to birth out of you. Amen. Now, it goes on to say that He said, Have you considered my servant Job? You see, Satan may come before God, and Satan may want to pick on this person, and pick on this person, and pick on this person, and pick on that person. But it is only God who will allow Satan to do anything. Satan may want to pick on Johnny here, little Johnny here, but God will say no because he is still young in his faith and he needs some time to grow. Again, God will never put something on you that you cannot handle. That's why God said, have you considered my servant Job? Because he was a man who was tried and tested and he knew that like when you teach your child to ride a bicycle and then eventually they go off and they're on their own, they get rid of those training wheels. Amen? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes! They're off on their own. They're up and running. Yes, that was God and Job. God was able to look at Job and see that now Job was able to, to live in the prosperity that God had blessed him with and he was faithful with everything God had put in his life. That's why God said, have you considered, because I, the Bible don't say this, but I really believe that Satan was saying, I want to pick on this person. I want to pick on that person. I want to kill this one. But God did not hear that because he knew some of those people will probably die if Satan did go and mess with them. But he said, look at Job. Have you considered him? And in Satan's foolishness, he says, ha, huh, he, does, he, does, does Job fear God for nothing? You know, you've blessed him. You've given him all these things. Of course he's going to honor you. Of course he's going to love you. But I tell you what, put forth your hand now and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. He will cuss you out. 
It's, and you see, Satan understands the principle of blessing. It's one thing to move the heart of a king. And it's totally another to move the hand of God, the king. God sees you in your situation. And God sees how you've done a mess of things in your life. And his heart breaks for you. Please, you've got to hear me this morning. His heart will break for you. But it's the hand of God that needs to be moved in our life. And the only thing that moves the hand of God is our honoring of God in our life. When you honor God, His hand can be moved. Now, God... See, Satan thought, oh man, put forth your hand. See, Satan understands that when the hand of God is moved, things happen. You see, God can put His hand upon you and bless you. Now, please hear me, church. God can remove His hand and you will be destroyed. And Satan knows that. Satan knows that through disobedience, God is, is bind by His Word to remove a hand under someone who is under disobedience. That God would have to remove His hand. And there are many people on the earth today that are walking in, under a curse, that are walking in disobedience, and they do not have the hand of God on them. And that's why they continually struggle and fight, because they are not honoring God. They're not trusting in the Lord. And when all seems lost, when all seems lost, the hand of God can be there or it cannot be there. But God knew His hand was there on him, on Job. And Satan said, yeah, well, put forth your hand. Move the hand. Satan understood this. He goes on to say in verse 13, it says, Now when the day of the Lord, now on the day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their older brother's house, it says, now this is fourfold, guys. See, Satan was sent out. He had permission. And I want you to understand this. Satan has to have permission to do whatever he does. And somebody could say, well, you know what? Then that says that God can instigate evil. No, it does not. No, it does not say that. The Bible is so deep. But you know that God is a good God. But the Lord does give and the Lord does take away. And we need to come to an understanding that there is a Father in heaven and He is all good. But that we do have an enemy. He has an enemy, an eternal enemy. And that enemy is soon to be put down into the lake of fire for eternity. And he is Satan. And he has a legion of demonic, of a, a, an army that follows him. The fallen angels. And they go out to do his work. But it go, what, what my point of what I'm saying is, is that when Job, when God said, look at Job and told Satan, go, now go ahead, but don't kill him. You can take away all these things in his life that you think that he'll curse me if he loses. God said, try, go ahead. But don't touch his, his life. That's got to bring comfort to you today. Amen. Knowing that God knows the very number of hairs in your head and you cannot be killed unless God says, it's your time to come home. Now, again, in reading this, you've got to have a heavenly perspective. Paul wrote it in the Bible. Paul said, for me to, to, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. The true Christian understands that when they die, they gain. Because now they're in glory. And, but if I'm not going to be in glory, if I am not dead, if I'm still alive on this earth, then I'm going to live for Christ. And the Bible teaches that either way, we win. Christians, we win either way. And, and Job understood this. That's why God allowed the devil to come against him. Because God could... God, eventually, guys, this is going to happen to every single one of you. God is going to allow you to take on the devil. He's going to allow you to fight some demons. But it's got to be when you have an understanding, you're honoring God, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you know that who your Savior and your Lord is of your life. It says, The day came when his sons... And daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And this is fourfold, guys. The first messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabians attacked and took them. And they also slew the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Number one, they came against his livelihood. They came against his company. Okay? Number two says, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven, burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. 
It took a little bit more of his livelihood. You see, Satan, he, he, he knows that the quickest way to, to get your faith roused up is to attack your finances, to attack your, your, your money. Because sadly, a lot of people's hope is in money. And that's why Satan will always attack you there. He don't know any other tricks. He don't know anything else. That's why he came to Job first, attacking his finances, attacking his very livelihood. And it goes on, while he was still speaking, verse 17, another came and said, the Chaldeans formed three bands and made a raid on the camels and took them and slew the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Three times, three servants came and said, your money is gone, Job. Well, I mean, he had, what did he have? 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. All of that, gone. Even the servants, the men and women, gone. All gone. Everything. They didn't have current paper money then. They didn't have currency like we have today. That was your livelihood. You, you wanted something? Well, you traded a goat. You traded a cow. You know, I mean, that, that was your livelihood. And Job lost it all in one day. In less than a day. Probably within one hour. He lost it all. When all seems lost, what will you do? You see, Satan, and it don't record here, but I truly believe that Satan came to him in three times, attacking Job, to see if Job would curse God. And what did Job do? The Bible says Job didn't say nothing. Job lost all his money, and Job still stood there. If some of us lose $50 in the bank, you, you get all crazy, don't you? Oh no, what am I going to do? Some of us work two, two hours overtime and we get shortchanged on that and they don't pay, the employer don't pay you and you just get all mad and bent out of shape. I've heard some crazy stories. Well, Job lost a million. He lost a fortune. And he just stood there. And he didn't say, oh, what am I going to do? What did he say? It says in verse 18, Satan took it a step higher. A notch higher. Because Satan knew, I can't hit him in the money. I can't hurt him where I think it hurts everybody else. See, because Satan attacks in a certain way because he sees the reaction of other people. And the majority of people on the earth, when their money is hit, they start whining and crying and complaining against God and cursing God. So therefore, he couldn't do this with Job. And he's like, hmm, so what do I do? Here's what he does. Verse 18, While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking. Oh no. Wine in their oldest brother's house. Oh no. And behold, a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they all died. And I alone have escaped to tell you. And then Job arose. See, Dan Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell to the ground and worshipped. He was tormented. When all seems lost, he was like, what am I going to do? He was, he was torn between two. He knew his sons and daughters were in the wrong. That's why he had been praying for them. And he knew, as a man of God, he knew that if his sons and daughters didn't repent and come to the Lord, that they would have judgment come upon them one day. But Job knew that and it tore the heart of the man of God. But he knew that this would one day come. We... Parents, godly people, you've got to understand that if your children are at an age of accountability and they're living in sin and they will not turn to God and if they're just compromising, you've got to prepare your heart that one day judgment will fall upon them. Don't walk around thinking, oh, well, they'll get it one day. Don't. You know what? Let's, what does the Bible say? Job knew. He kept praying and I'm sure he kept trying to tell them, hey, what you're doing is wrong. What you're doing is wrong. He loved them, but that he spoke truth to them. And sometimes the children will come back home to the father. In this case, they did not and they died. Job tore his robe. He shaved his head. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. Meaning, I came into this world with nothing. I brought nothing into this world. 
And he said, and naked I shall return there. He was saying, I understand. I understand that you can take all the money from me. And that's not going to bother me. Because I came into this world naked and naked I shall leave. But he goes on to say here, But the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. But he says, But the Lord has given me blessings and now He's taken away not only all my finances, but He's taken all my children. And right there at that moment was a God moment for Job. He could have cursed God, but what did He say? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And through all of this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. Many people failed God at that moment in their life. Not one time did I get mad with God and say, God, why did you take my daughter? Lord, I, I opened up the scriptures. I put the Bible on her, on her body. I, I anointed her with oil. And Lord, I say, you said we have not, Lord, because we ask not. And I prayed, Lord, let her live. Let her live. Let her live, Lord. I want to I raise this daughter up. You know, our kids were already becoming teenagers and here we have a new baby coming and she was alive and she was, she was feisty. And I said, Lord, let her live. They say she's going to die, Lord, but let her live, Lord. Let her live. And the Lord took her home. And, and, and Satan tried to tell me, curse God. You're a pastor. You're an associate pastor. Curse God. And not one time, because I remembered, I read this when I was in my heart. But I don't think I've ever been that wounded in my life ever. And I looked at this and I said, Through all this, Job did not sin, nor did he blame God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I looked and I said, Lord, bless you. And the Lord said, You know, she sees my face right now. That's something you've desired, haven't you, son? And I said, Yes, Lord. He goes, She sees me face to face. One day you'll be here too, son. And that gave me such a comfort that I cannot comprehend. It's hard for a father when you're so used to doing everything. In this case, you can do nothing but just stand there and let God be God. I came to learn a powerful lesson that that's how it has to be all the time. That I just need to stand still and let God be God. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them to pre present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around on it. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6-11 through 11 says this, it says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you at the proper time. Cast all your anxiety on Him, because God cares for you. Be of a sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. God said, Where have you been? And Satan said, roaming about on the earth and walking on it. God's word is beautifully blended here. The Old Testament said that that's what Satan did. The New Testament said that's what Satan does. He walks the earth looking for someone like a roaring lion who he may devour. Some of you have been chewed up and chomped pretty good by the lion, haven't you? Choose life today while you're still above the ground. It is not too late. The scripture goes on to say in 1 Peter 5, it says, verse 9, but resist him. You must resist the devil. How? Firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of sufferings are being accomplished, mean are being done to your brethren who are in the whole world. You think you're going through something hard? You think you're going through something hard. What about your other brothers in Christ around the world? You know, persecution will come to us in many types, in many ways. As I'm speaking, my brother from Pakistan just sent me a message saying good morning. Right now, it's 10.05 p.m. his time. And he just sent me a message saying praise God. He just got done with services. The type of persecution he goes through can result in martyrdom. In Pakistan, 
Jesus is becoming more and more preached on the streets, he told me. But Jesus, if you preach this enough in Pakistan, they will kill you. Now, we don't have that kind of persecution in America. But we do have persecution here in America as a Christian. And how? The same way Job's going through this. You're being attacked in your finances. You're, the, the devil wants to steal and kill your children. The, 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 there are different kinds of persecutions. But it's persecution, period. It goes on to say here, it says in verse 10 of 1 Peter 5, And after you have suffered for a while, a little while, like this, it says, The God of all grace, who called you to His eternal glory in Christ, will Himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To Him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is saying, you're not going to go through this forever. All this drama that you're going all through right now, it's not going to be forever. Now you may have made some pretty silly decisions in your life. But the Lord is saying, I can work through all of that. I can make all things new. Job just lost ten children, guys. Ten children. Ten children, gone. All his money, gone. All he has left is a nagging wife. Yes. If you read here in a little bit, all he has is an unbelieving, unfaithful wife to God. And that's the formula that Satan will try to do. It's what he did with Adam and Eve. He went to the wife to get them to sin. And that's what he, that's the same pattern. See, Satan only knows the same tricks. And that's the same thing he did to try and discourage Job. He went through the wife to try and speak to Job. We're going to read this in just a minute. You've got to see, Satan operates in the same pattern all the time. So does God. God can restore all things. God can make all things new. Just like Satan can destroy all things, God can renew all things. Amen? Hey, somebody got to say amen to the Lord in this place. Amen. amen. It says in verse 3 of chapter 2 of Job, it said, The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Well, wait a minute, Lord. You don't ask him already in the first chapter, have you considered him? See, God won the first part of this battle. And see, God wants to take it up a notch. And you got to understand some Christian, God always wants to take it up a notch with you. Amen? God don't just want to leave you in mediocrity. But the only way we're going to go to a new level, we got to face a new devil. we got to face some harder, harder trials, harder tribulations, but God will go with you. He says, have you considered my, my servant, Job? For there is no one like him on the earth. Oh, wow. Isn't that good to hear God say that about you? There ain't no one like him on the earth. Oh, wow. That, that, that is humbling. God's looking for those kind of people to boast in today. Are you one of them? Are you one of them? There is no one like him on the earth. A blameless and upright man. Fearing God and turning away from evil. Turning away from evil. I don't want to have nothing to do with evil. You know, I'd be flipping through the channels. And I, on that, that satellite, we got like 500 million channels. And I will click 500 million times and I'd find nothing. <laughs> turn away from evil. Just turn it off and do something else. Get into the Word or something. You know, the closer you get to God, the less TV you're going to start watching. And the less self you're going to start doing. And you're just going to get want to be intimate and private with God. And you're going to get involved in the things of God on this earth. You're going to become active. He says, turn away from evil. He does this. And he still holds fast his integrity. Meaning, he went through something, Satan. I allowed you, but he holds his integrity. You know what? When it, got, when it comes down to it, the only thing you have left is your integrity. You can lose all your money. You can lose all your relationships. You can lose everything. But the only thing you have left is your integrity. Your testimony. What is your testimony? That I only served God when the times were good? Or I served God through the good and the bad? And that's why I one day hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. He holds fast his integrity. Although, Satan, you incited me against him to ruin him without a cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yes. All that a man has, he will give for his life. That is true. Satan ain't lying. The majority of mankind, they will give everything they have. They will sell their soul to just to save a little bit of time on this earth. They will sell their soul for eternity just to have a good life for 20, 30 years on this earth. 
And Satan knows that. And Satan says, skin for skin, soul for soul. Verse 5. However, put forth your hand now. You see, Satan understands the only things can happen by the hand of God. Moving or being removed. So the Lord said to Satan, Behold, oh, I'm sorry, verse 5, it says, However, put forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. See, now Satan is taking it up. You know what? You told me last time I couldn't touch him. But now I'm telling you, touch him. Try it. So the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your power. Only spare his life. You can do all you want to him physically, but do not kill him. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. Wow. Uh, smote. That's a word we don't use, is it? Would you like to be smoted today? Smoted. Can somebody give me an understanding, a definition of that word? Smote. Uh, smote. Devil, the Satan smoted you today. Wow. It said he smoted him with sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. His entire body. And sometimes you feel when the devil puts you through something, you, your whole body is going to pay for it. Your whole DNA. But God loves you. See, Satan, uh, Job was going through all of this because of his love for God. Because of his love for God, Job was going through this. And he took a potsherd to scrape himself while he was sitting among the ashes. Job took a piece of metal and just started scraping him. It, all that boils off of him. He was not trying to cut himself. He was not being a cutter like people cut. He was, there was, there's a spiritual thing that I can't get into that. But, but he was just shaving this stuff off of him. And he took, it says here in verse 9, it says, Then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Because she knew that's all he had left. Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Wow. Thanks a lot, wife. Knew we can count on you. Thanks for the words of encouragement. I mean, kind of sounds like my wife. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I can say it because she's not here. She's in the back. No, without her, I'd be in big trouble. Seriously. Without her, I'd be in big trouble. I'd depend on her wisdom tremendously. But he said to her, You speak as of a foolish woman speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? And all this Job did not sin with his lips. Job was saying, Woman, we need to worship the Lord through the good and the bad. You know, when you go through that kind of trial and tribulation and persecution and you prove to God that your love for Him is genuine, a blessing will come. God will bless you and you will be thankful that you did not turn away in your fight against Satan because in the whole time God was inside of you and He was encouraging you and He was speaking to you and He was surrounding you with a church who could love you and could encourage you and that's why it's so important for the church members to be here for everything because we have to understand that when we go through things sometimes it may seem like everything's lost that's when the power of Jesus Christ will come in and He'll step in and He'll say to Satan be gone in the name of the Lord James chapter 4 verse 7 says this, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Do you know that you can make the devil run away from you? How? By submitting to God. What does submit mean? It means surrender. It means give willingly. Not, oh man, surrender. Trust in the Lord. Give to Him. Submit to Him. And the devil will flee from you. We need to understand that we can make a mess of things. We need to understand that our way may not always be the right way. For some, we are in a merry-go-round of desperation. We'll come to God through a certain season 
and then go through trials and tribulations and then walk away from God and then when Satan leaves us alone we'll get hungry for God again and then we'll come to God and then Satan comes back to attack and then we'll just back off of God I mean it's got to come to a point where you know what we need to grow stop acting childish get mature get involved in what God is putting in your life to do I believe everybody who's a church member should be involved in church ministry I'm old school guys that's the what I believe because God has put a calling on every Christian to be a part of what God is doing in the church if you're a new Christian you listen to my way video you come to the church grow get some roots give it give it six seven months grow some roots but then after a while it's time to get active it's time to get involved it's time to get to serve the Lord 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 reminds us of this a powerful lesson Paul writes to the young pastor Timothy and Paul says this indeed all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will be persecuted if you desire to live godly in Jesus you will now you might or you, you should you will be persecuted you will be and again what I said earlier there's persecutions of all kinds persecution that results in martyrdom persecution that results in loss of finances or children or whatever it may be but you will be going through persecution Jesus said they persecuted me they're gonna persecute you but Jesus says fear not little children for I have overcome the world and so the world, I look, I stand, and I see this world already defeated. I don't have to be an addict. I don't have to be a perverter. I don't have to be a fornicator or an adulterer. Because the Lord defeated all the world in the system of the world and the kingdom of Satan. So I can come and approach everyday life in the power of the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, I indeed surrender and submit to you so that way the devil will flee from me. So that way, even though I go through persecutions, I have an eternal crown waiting for me. And my children will be blessed. And my house will be blessed. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. And Jesus Christ is coming. I believe the Antichrist is alive on the face of this earth today. That is my opinion. But I believe he is alive. And he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. There are some things that have been happening. And I am excited because I know my Jesus is right around the corner. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verses 38-39. Our last scripture. It says this. And Paul writes this. And Paul can write this because he used to murder Christians until he had an encounter with Jesus and became a Christian himself. And he lived a whole life. And actually, Paul was killed. And this is his secular Roman historian even proves this, that Paul was had his head. He was beheaded for his faith in Jesus Christ. A man who used to murder Christians, very well documented who became a Christian and went and began started to preach the gospel and began to build the church. He planted churches all over, all over the known world of his time. And he came to a point in his old life right before he was murdered by the Romans, before he was beheaded. He said this, he goes, and it's a, because that was his desire to eventually take the gospel to Rome. And he says this, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principality, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul is saying, I've seen everything. Paul is saying this. Paul is saying, look, I've seen some things. Paul is saying, I've planted a couple churches around the continents. Paul is saying, I've written a couple books in the Bible. Paul is saying, I've tasted the heavenly gift. Paul is saying, I've seen Jesus face to face. That so much that I lost my sight for three days. Paul is saying, I know who Jesus Christ is. Paul is saying, I've talked to Peter. I've talked to John. I've talked to the other men who saw the, the miracles that Jesus Christ did. Paul is saying, I have seen some things. And I am absolutely convinced that nothing will separate me from Jesus Christ from the love of God that is in him and him alone so Satan when all seems lost Jesus says otherwise when all seems lost when it seems like everything's going downhill I can stand I can look to my Savior Jesus and I could say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is good. He is good to me. Right. And I will forever worship Him in His eternal presence. Thank you, Lord. And He is 
worthy to receive praise on this earth. And He is worthy to receive praise in heaven. And it's got to come to a point in my life and in your life and in the church's life that we must say, blessed be the name of the Lord. No matter what comes against us, we will live. Because the Lord says, I give you life and life abundantly. If we will stop being our own worst enemy and stop cursing God and start believing in God, then we will have blessing in our life. And I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're going through. If you let go of unforgiveness right now, if you let go of hurt and pain and neglect right now, the Lord will bring healing in your life. If you've got unforgiveness in your heart, and there's so many things happening right now, but if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, you cannot see God. You cannot see God. You cannot see God. You will not see God if you have unforgiveness in your heart. Because God says, forgive as you have been forgiven. Amen. And if you have no forgiveness, how can you see the face of God? God will not contradict His Word. We must forgive one another. That is the fruit, that is the evidence in our life that we know Jesus Christ. And Job didn't divorce his wife because she acted like a foolish woman. He worked with her, he stayed with her, and at the end of Job's life, what does it say? They had more children. God gave them twice as many more over. God can make all things new. Praise the Lord. Receive that in Jesus' name.